Well, the most shocking thing about the Grammy Awards last night was that apparently they're still doing the Grammy Awards. The second most shocking thing is that from what I read this morning, they gave the Song of the Year honor to Bonnie Raitt, who's a, a talented and soulful musical artist who actually deserves the recognition. She was able to go up to the stage by herself to accept the award because she wrote and performed the song herself. Compare that to, say, Beyonce, who needs 97 songwriters and 3,000 producers to manufacture her music through an, an assembly line-like process. But Bonnie Raitt is not the person we're supposed to be celebrating today. Our adulation is supposed to be focused primarily on the singers Kim Petras and Sam Smith. They're both white males, but their win is the in the uh, best pop duo category. It's supposed to be a victory for diversity and inclusion, as these are white males who self-identify as something other than white males. Sam Smith claims to be non-binary, while Kim Petras identifies as a transgender woman, quote unquote. Here is uh, Petras accepting the award and congratulating himself for his historic achievement. Listen. Sam graciously wanted me to accept this award because I'm the first uh, transgender woman to win this award. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm so... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and I just want to thank um, all the incredible transgender legends before me who kicked these doors open for me so I could be here tonight. Well, he's not the first male to win the award. He's probably not the first male who dresses like a woman to win it, but he is the first male winner who claims to be a woman. And this is supposed to be a historic achievement. But here's a perhaps more interesting point about Kim Petras, born Tim Petras. He got gender reassignment, quote unquote, surgery at the age of 16. In fact, back in 2009, the then aspiring pop star did a media tour where he was celebrated for having the courage to live as his true self with the aid of, you know, genital mutilation and drugs and all the rest of it. Here's a clip from an interview on a British talk show back then. Listen. But it's not just the scale of her ambition that makes young Kim very extraordinary. Well, Kim was born Tim and is believed to be the youngest person in the world to have had a sex change. And, uh, and she joins us now. And it's lovely to have you here. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. much indeed. Thank Welcome. you for having me. <laughs> so, um, so you're born in 1992 in Cologne yeah. in Germany. Right. And we've, we've met a number of, of people who've been in a sort of similar position, who, okay. who've sat where you're sitting. And all have said from the word go, there was no question that they knew precisely what they were. They were yeah. trapped in the wrong body. It's right. Um, I always knew it. You know, when I was a little kid, I was always wanting pink dresses, Barbie, everything. Well, there you have it. He liked pink dresses, he liked Barbie. Clearly proof that he was born in the wrong body, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean exactly. But his doctors couldn't give him a new body because such a thing is impossible. You can't have a new body. You only have the body that you're born with. All they could do is mutilate the one and the only body that he has or will ever have. And that's what they did at the age of 16. Now, keep this in mind when the left claims that these procedures aren't being performed on minors. One of the biggest now Grammy Award-winning pop stars in the country is a male who had his gender reassigned or confirmed, according to the updated euphemisms, as a minor. And this was back in 2009 when the medical guidelines were stricter than they are today, though obviously they were not nearly strict enough even then. Now, the song that won the award is aptly titled Unholy, and the two award-winning males performed it for the assembled audience after they won this award. Madonna, who um, with each passing day comes to more and more resemble the creepy puppet from the, the Saw franchise, introduced the duo, who then launched into a blatantly demonic performance. The whole thing was designed to look like some kind of satanic sex ritual with fire and devil horns and BDSM themes and Sam Smith dressed like Satan. Here's a clip, and make sure you pay attention uh, all the way to the end of this clip. Watch. The Satanic Ritual brought to you by Pfizer. A little too on the nose, I have to say. Now, needless to say, the main reason they went all in with the campy party city devil costumes and demonic imagery and all of that is that they want attention. 
Sam Smith is the same guy who just released a music video that shows him parading around at a piss orgy drinking urine. He's uh, desperate to be noticed and will do literally whatever it takes. He certainly can't rely on the quality of his music to speak for itself. I mean, putting aside the, the Satanist stuff, just listen to the lyrics from that unholy song that we just heard a clip of. Lyrics. Mommy don't know daddy's getting hot at the body shop doing something unholy. He sat back while she's dropping it. She'd be popping it. Yeah, she put it down slowly. This is just absolute brain rotting stupidity. These are alleged artists who have no art to offer, nothing to say, no talent, no creativity. And so they can only try to shock us. There's always been art with immoral messages. The difference is that in modern times, our immoral art is produced by the most tiresome collection of monotonous, talentless, idiot hacks to ever walk the earth. As I said about Sam Smith's pee-guzzling music video, this stuff is indeed offensive and gross and disgusting, etc. It's all of that. But it's also utterly tedious and boring. These depraved attention mongers can't even manage to be offensive in an interesting way. Instead, they simply recycle the same shock tactics over and over again. And we've seen it all by now. As it turns out, there are only so many ways to be a satanic whore. After a while, it gets repetitive. And, and we are way past that point today. But with that said, even if these degenerate pop stars are just vying for our attention in the most obvious, overdone ways because they have the IQ and creative talent of a paper plate, there is still a certain significance to the fact that a major broadcast network, uh, you know, broadcast a satanic ritual live on air last night. I think it'd be a mistake to ignore this development completely. Instead, we should, I think, focus on it for long enough to learn the lesson that this event can teach us. Two lessons, really. First, the left's cultural agenda is to tear down and desecrate all that you love and hold as sacred. They have no ideas of their own. They have no plan beyond the, the, the destruction. That's why they borrow from Christianity even while they try to ridicule it. They have to, in effect, sit on the same limb they're trying to saw off the tree. They can't stand on their own. They have nothing. They don't have their own platform. It's an agenda motivated by pure hatred and resentment. They, they don't even know why they hate what they hate, but they do hate it, and their hatred drives them to destroy. Second, and I think maybe most important point, is that leftism is Satanism. There's a reason they rely so heavily on Satanic imagery and all that kind of stuff. They are all literally Satanists just not, for the most part, theological Satanists. That's an important distinction here. There are some theological Satanists out there who, who actually worship the devil outwardly, you know. Um, but these people, they don't consider themselves, and most leftists, they, they certainly don't consider themselves to be worshiping a being called Satan. Rather, they're worshiping what Satan worshiped, which is the self. The story of Satan is that he refused to worship and serve God, choosing instead to worship and serve himself. And the modern leftist has made the same choice. Leftism is the worship of the self. It is the elevation of the self and the wants and desires of the self, especially the sexual wants and desires, above everyone and everything else. Almost all modern pop music is an ode to this idea. Pop stars are singing praises to the gospel of self-worship, which is to say that most of it is satanic. Yes, there's something that Media Matters can, can pull. Most pop music is satanic because it is, it is, a, is about promoting the worship of the self. It's just that it's usually not so explicit about it. But I think it's probably better that they are explicit so that people can see all this stuff for what it really is and respond accordingly to it. And that'll do it for this portion of the show. As we move over to the members block, hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.